High Limit Racing sent their warning shot at World of Outlaws on Tuesday when they announced some of their 2024 plans. Alright, how's it going everyone? Big news in the sprint car world and big news in motorsports in general. High Limit Racing, which obviously we all know at this point, bought out the All-Star Circuit of Champions and combined it into one tour, announced their 2024 plans on Tuesday, and they are taking this regional tour that was the All-Star Circuit of Champions and turning that into a national tour, exactly like we thought was going to happen. They're going to have a 50-plus race schedule in 2024. They're going to take off the weekends where there are going to be sprint car crown jewel events. So whether that's the Kings Royal or the Knoxville Nationals, they're going to take those weekends off. They will also not be restricting any of their full-time drivers from racing in any other series, which is a major step ahead of what the World of Outlaws are doing. They will also have a $1 million point fund for the end of the year with the winner of the points championship, of course, taking home $250,000. They will also have a midweek money series throughout the season, basically what High Limit was built off of in those midweek races so Kyle Larson could race, which will have a $100,000 points fund as well. Then total, they will have $5 million worth of payout for 2024. And like I said, they sent a warning shot at the World of Outlaws today, and they put everybody on notice that High Limit Racing is here, and they're not going anywhere. They are very much here to disrupt what the World of Outlaws has done and create a rival national touring series to the World of Outlaws. Flow Racing also announced that they will have a minority stake in the new High Limit Racing series. Brad Sweet and Kyle Larson co-own it. Flow Racing will have, like I said, a minority stake. They will also be the exclusive home for High Limit Racing with more expanded content beyond just the 50 plus races that they will be doing. And it creates a rival to Dirt Vision. We said before that the streaming wars were playing a major factory in here. Obviously, World of Outlaws has their in-house streaming service with Dirt Vision, Flow Racing, in an effort to attract even more viewers, if you don't subscribe to Flow already, you absolutely should. It's one of the best deals in racing. But creating a national sprint car tour to rival World of Outlaws was something that they desperately wanted to do. And now they will be doing that on top of only taking an equity stake, a minority equity stake. They will also have the exclusive home for a multi-year agreement as well with High Limits Racing. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Is this cart in the IRL all over again? I'm not ready to go down that road just yet, but High Limit is certainly going to make a lot of owners and a lot of drivers sit down this winter and contemplate where they want to race at in 2024. Because as Brad Sweet said in his press release when they announced all this today, High Limit Racing is giving teams the most revenue opportunities that we've ever seen in sprint car racing outside of, you know, the Eldora Million or something like that. Teams that race in high limit will have the opportunity to make more money than any sprint car team ever has before because right now, World of Outlaws currently limits their full-time participants that are racing for the championship from competing in anything else outside of World of Outlaws. They only get four races outside of the Outlaws to race in each year, and Eldora Million this year counted as two of those dates. So that means that outside of that, they really only had two dates to do, and we saw most of them show up and race and high limit at some point on one of those $50,000 to win nights. Now, high limit's not putting that limit on anything. They're saying go out and race as much as you want. And honestly, that's good for motorsports. That's good for dirt racing. That's good for anybody that wants to see these guys go out there and race week in and week out. And it doesn't matter what series they're a part of. World of Outlaws, of course, has not said if they're going to counter that and open it up for their teams to do. They did announce that they will increase some purses for next year, World of Outlaws, that is high limit. Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet are out here trying to help these teams make money. The minimum purse will be $10,000 on the preliminary night, meaning that for the future, it's going to be more than that. There are certain features right now on the World of Outlaws schedule that pay $10,000 to win. So High Limit is out here making sure there's going to be more money in the pockets of these teams and of these drivers, which is massive. I can't, I, I can't under, I overstate honestly, how big it is for what they're doing money-wise right now. Will the price of flow racing go up? I don't know. I've been wondering this as well, and it wasn't in the frequently asked question and answer section that flow racing put out today about high limit racing. Um, but if it does go up, it might be worth a couple more bucks for the yearly subscription just so we can watch this. But what we do know about the schedule, it's not out yet. They said it'll be 50 plus races. Of course, it will have 
the stalwarts of the All-Star Circuit of Champion races uh, on there. Uh, I'll get to that in a second about the 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 crown jewels of that of that schedule they will still continue on as high limit racing races in the future they will also be starting their season off at east bay raceway outside of tampa bay in february they'll be ending their season at the dirt track at texas motor speedway in october they will also have two companion races with the nascar cup series one at texas in the spring i believe in april and they will have another one with kansas as well in may i believe as well. Uh, that way Kyle Larson can probably race on those Saturday nights and it'll be good if you're in town for those races or if you're just living in the area. Anyways, you can go out and catch that race on Saturday night, catch the cup race on Sunday. Overall, it's a great tie-in for them. They will also have two dates at Eldora Speedway. One earlier in the season, uh, the the prelim, the, the beginning of the week before the Kings Royal. And they will also be back for the Four Crown Nationals as well in the fall, and that will be a high limit race as well. They will also have the biggest midweek money race at Eagle in Nebraska, which is huge. That was a great race earlier this year in high limit. If you didn't see it, the crowd absolutely came out for that. One of the best sprint car crowds you'll see in a long time, and now they're taking it back, and high limit will go there once again. High limit will be going coast to coast as well. They're going east coast, midwest, Plains, and they're going out to California as well for the first time. They're going to Silver Dollar Speedway, Skagit. They're going to hit the big ones out there uh, for the most part, right? So they're very much a national tour at this point. And like I said, they're going to put a lot of pressure on some of these teams to go full time with them. Brad Sweet, Casey Kane Racing, that number 49, Napa car, and you know, whether Casey runs that nine car next year or whatever happens, they are full time high limit racing in 2024. They are no longer on the World of Outlaws. World of Outlaws just lost their five time defending champ to go over to the rival series, which of course Brad Sweet co owns. Kyle Larson will be racing as many high limit races as his as they say, busy cup schedule allows as he also tries to pursue a second NASCAR Cup Series championship and an Indy 500 victory. That's all from their press release. I didn't come up with that right off my brain. I'm not here to promote Kyle Larson, but I think what they're doing is huge for the sport of sprint car racing, of motorsports in general. And honestly, I like what we're seeing. Matt Weaver from Sports Not put out a great article. I'll actually drop it in the link from this YouTube video about the future of World of Outlaws and the future of High Limit and how they can coexist or what's going to happen uh, in the future. And there's some great quotes in there from everybody, and I'm not going to sit here and read them verbatim. Go read them and support what Matt's doing over there. But one of the biggest takeaways for me is there seems to be some uneasiness. World of Outlaws and their CEO, Brian Carter, very cocky. They know that they have the brand equity. They know that they have the name recognition. They know that they have the marquee events. At the same time though, high limits coming in here, they're new, they're young, and they're paying a lot of money. And I think that's going to be the biggest trade-off here. If high limit is letting you race for a championship and go race those marquee events, your Knoxville Nationals, your Kings Royal, your High Bank Nationals up at uh, Husets, you, if you're a team owner, from a financial standpoint, you kind of have to go with high limit. At the same time, we've seen people like David Gravel say that he got into sprint car racing because he wants to win a World of Outlaws championship. There's something about, again, that brand recognition, and they want to go over there and win it. And, you know, he sticks around, he wins it in 2024. Who's to say he doesn't jump over? Who's to say that he sticks around in 2024? So can these two tours coexist? You know... All-Star Circuit of Champions worked because it was basically Ohio, Pennsylvania, and maybe you would sprinkle in another state or two in there. It was a regional tour. It worked. It wasn't that much of a threat to what World of Outlaws is doing. Now it's a threat. Now they're paying money. Now they're going coast to coast, and now they have a major streaming partner behind them. I think the both the two series can coexist for a time. Of course, we're eventually going to see some sort of IRL cart situation. One of these two series is going to get absolutely ravaged of their name drivers. And right now, all those drivers are at World of Outlaws. So does World of Outlaws lose all of theirs? What's different here about what happened with cart and what happened with IRL is cart got to keep all the marquee names. Meanwhile, IRL kept the marquee event, that being the Indianapolis 500. Eventually, they won out. This is a little bit different because there's not necessarily a marquee event if High Limit's letting you go over and run those series. 
And granted, Cart and IndyCar did let each other go over and run, but at the same time, it was very contentious. Obviously, we had the limited number of spots that Champ Car and Cart teams could have within the Indianapolis 500. Here, you have all the names over here, but you have a lot more money over here at high limit. It'll be interesting to see if these two can coexist and for how long. I think eventually all that's going to happen are these two tours over time will become one and the same. And really, I think that might be what the end game is here, but it's not going to happen for a while. And it's not going to happen without some hurt feelings on the World of Outlaw side and without High Limit taking some major risk and major chances and trying to land and pull away some of the other guys. So really fascinated time happening right now in the sprint car world. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog. And like I said, I'll link Matt's article here below that you can read about uh, what drivers had to say about the, you know, the two series going forward.